evening. Many thanks for joining us live on QTV. You are watching QTV News, and I am Ajibintu Dwame in tonight's top stories. Winners of the National Quranic Memorization Competition, organized and sponsored by QCEL, have received certificates and cash prizes at the Q City grounds in Bijilo. Muslims in the Gambia are today observing Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, which falls within all days in the last 10 days of Ramadan. The Gambia Red Cross Society joins the rest of the world to celebrate World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day. In international news, despite many African countries struggling to obtain enough COVID-19 vaccines, some have thousands of expired doses they have been unable to use due to problems. In sports news, Talending United moved away from the relegation zone for the first time in many weeks and BK Milan also gave themselves a boost with a victory against Camtel. Well, those were out of stories for tonight. Do stay tuned for the news in detail. Now, the Quranic Memorization Competition, organized and sponsored by QCEL, has ended at the QCity grounds in Bijulu, and winners presented with cash prizes. Mumbadullah Minchoy tells us more. The first revelation of the Quran, the Muslim scripture that served as a guidance and clear proof for mankind, was in the holy month of Ramadan. In what is a groundbreaking first in the history of the Gambia, a national Quranic recitation competition for schools from three regions has successfully concluded. The competition was organized and sponsored by QCEL in collaboration with the Supreme Islamic Council. Eight schools competed in the recitation with four participants for four segments into which the Holy Quran was divided by the judges. After intense competition, the jury finalized a list of schools and participants declared winners and runners-up for the first quarter, half and full segments of the Quran. And at two days closing, the results are announced. Certificates are issued to each school and individual participants and cash prizes ranging from $10,000 to $75,000 presented to winners and runners-up. Darul Arham Abi Arham emerged winner in the first part of the Quran, followed by Sheikh Mamur Mbai School. For the quarter segment, also in the same order, Darul Arham Ibn Abi Arham emerged first position, followed by Sheikh Mamur Mbai School. In the competition for the half segment of the Quran, Darul Arham ibn Abi Arham is declared winner and followed by Asha Umul Muminin. And finally for the full Quran, Imam Malik Institute was declared winner and Darul Arham ibn Arham followed. At the closing ceremony, the president of the Supreme Islamic Council, Sheikh Esa Dawa, praised the Q group for its contributions towards the Muslim Ummah during Ramadan through its Q logo for Quranic schools and mosques across the country and this national competition. The Super Islamic Council president also acknowledged that such gestures will ensure the promotion of Islam in the Gambia. In attendance and speaking at the closing ceremony is also the Imam Rati of Banjul, al Haji Charna Maska, who recognizes the role of the Q group in national development and at the West African sub-region. The Imam looks forward to the competition succeeding within and beyond the country. This National Quranic Recitation Competition is also hailed as one of the most successful in the history of the Gambia. The chairman of the Q Group, Mohamed Jah, reveals plans to organize the competition nationwide annually during Ramadan, starting from regional heats, where participants are to be scouted for the national competition. So we thought it best that we organize something, you know, nationally, so that from that national competition, we can take, you know, and take them to regional or global competitions. So that is the whole essence of, of this. The key group chairman also advised students to not only engage in learning the Quran, but also other professions that will prepare them for different walks of life. Yeah, so the objective is to, 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 make, to have the, you know, people, not only students, would have um, uh, the, the, the Muslims master the Quran. That's the whole objective. Al Haji Imam Usman Ja, the coordinator of the competition and a prominent Islamic scholar in the Gambia, talks about how the National Quranic Recitation Competition can help in the promotion and propagation of the Islamic religion. It's the constitution of Islam. 
So encouraging people to memorize Holy Quran and to recite it will immensely support the existence and strengthen the Islamic religion. This competition is part of the Kill Group's drive towards the promotion of education in the country as a means of contributing to the religious and socio-economic development of the Gambia, a worldwide path that Islamic leaders at this occasion have hailed as worthy of emulation. Mahmoud Lamin, QTV TV News. Well, congratulations to the winners. Muslims in the Gambia are today observing Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, which falls within all days in the last 10 days of Ramadan. We engage with the president of the Supreme Islamic Council, Sheikh Esa Dabo, on how Muslims should emulate Prophet Muhammad in observing the night. Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, night of value, night of destiny or night of measures, marks the night in which the Quran was first revealed to Prophet Muhammad by Allah through Angel Gabriel. Laylatul Khadr is that one night that holds extra meaning during the holy month of Ramadan. It is the holiest night in the Islamic calendar. The president of the Supreme Islamic Council, Sheikh Esa Dabo, took us through how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam marked the event. He used to do certain you know, ty types of uh, worships, uh, including uh, to pray, perform prayers and also uh, to recite the Quran and to do zikr, to, to name, you know, uh, Allah's, Allah, to, to cite Allah's name, and also to give out uh, charity. So all good things are, are, are recommended in this night because uh, as the stated in the Quran, Laylatul Qadr and Khairu min al fishah Dabu calls on Muslims to give extra attention to the night, considering that it comes in Ramadan once a year. Allah says in the Quran, Whoever establishes the prayers on the night of Qadr out of sincere faith and hoping to attain Allah's rewards, all his past sins will be forgiven. Dabo elaborates. Any type of worship you do means you do it every day for the period of 84 years, which, which is a great thing. That means if you, if re, if you pray, that means uh, the reward that you are going to have equivalent to 84 years prayers. If you give sadaqa, charity, means every day you give charity for the period of 84 years. So it's a great uh, day. That's why I urge all Muslims, you know, to, to go to the mosque. Or if you, even if you cannot go to the mosque, then stay, stay at home and then do uh, pray all type of uh, worships that you can do. This night falls within the old days of the last 10 days of Ramadan. But the exact date is not known. However, it is widely believed to be the 27th day of the holy month. Muslims are advised to be active in prayers throughout the last 10 days, as the exact date is unknown. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jennifer Sonko. The Red Cross Society joins the rest of the world to celebrate World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day in a low-key ceremony at the Humanitarian Institution's headquarters in Carnivin. Lamin Dabo has the rest of that story. This day is set aside by the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement in memory of the birth of its founding father, Sergeant Henry Donan, who was born on the 8th May 1828 in Switzerland. The day is a way of showing appreciation for his visionary initiative, which gave birth to the existence of the world's greatest humanitarian movement. On this day across the world, people are reminded of the need to support protect and alleviate human suffering wherever it may be found, guided by the sole aim of promoting the spirit of humanity. The theme for this year's celebration is unstoppable. At the event, the national president of the Gambia Red Cross Society, Jato Silla, sets light on the theme of this year's celebration. The team carries a special message that is because together our commitment to make the world a safer and more peaceful place is definitely unstoppable. These volunteers work every day to ensure the determination to make sure communities have the knowledge and means to protect themselves, reduce their risks, and live safely and with dignity. I said to Emba, the gender and diversity focal person of the Gambia Red Cross Society, says the secret behind the humanitarian institution's success 
is as due to prioritizing gender and diversity. Gambians believe that Gambia Red Cross operation only stops at first aid services, attending sport events and responding to disaster. But we've gone beyond that. And we are, of course, into the most dedicated area, that is the protection, gender, and inclusion. And uh, if we say protection, gender, and inclusion here, we're looking at the diversification of the most vulnerable people, capturing those that are left behind, including those that are excluded, into our responses and in our operations. Alassane Senghor, the Secretary General of the Gambia Red Cross Society, explains some of the activities implemented by the country's humanitarian institution during this pandemic. We started with fumigation of private houses, institutions, schools, and so on. And there uh, we had altogether over 2,300 individual homes, institutions, including schools across the country. Through our G plus emergency response services, we have ambulances that were specifically designed to handle complex cases. They were able to do uh, 831 transfers of cases between homes and institutions and treatment centers and hospitals all across the country. World Red Cross Day will continue to remind people by making them reflect on the memories of the highest level of hard work, commitment, dedication and outstanding sacrifice, the gallant volunteers of the world's humanitarian movement continue to deliver in alleviating human suffering, upholding human dignity, protecting lives, providing first aid, responding to emergency situations, including disaster and epidemics, among others. For QTV News, Lamin Alai Fandindawo. We will take a short commercial break. Still to come, we have more local stories, international and sporting swallows. Do stay tuned. Ramadan Mubarak from Aji Bank Limited. This Ramadan, when you open a savings account with Aji Bank Limited, you will receive a free passbook. And when you open a current or salary account with the bank, you will receive a checkbook for free. Aji Bank Limited is the only Islamic bank in the Gambia and we share profits with our clients. So why wait? Visit any Aji Bank Limited branch today and open your savings account, current or salary account and enjoy the halal beauty of Islamic banking in line with the Sharia. Aji Bank Limited, your investment partner. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, this is QTV News. In other news, the United Cities of Local Government has named Rohi Malik Lo, the mayor of Banjo City, the African mayor of the month of April 2021. In an interview with QTV's Aliu Sise, she dedicates the award to the women and youth of the Gambia. Rohi Malik Lo, the first female mayor of Banjo City Council and the Gambia, continues to break boundaries with international recognition. The United Cities of Local Government has named her the African Mayor of April 2021. The United Cities of Local Government, UCLG, formed in 2004, is a global body for cities, local and regional governments, and municipal associations throughout the world that represents and defends their interests at the global stage. Last year, Mayor Slo was elected President of the African Capital Cities Sustainability Forum. She is an executive member of the Global Parliament of Mayors, and also the national president of the Reflag Gambia chapter, a non-political international group, a platform for women to talk about their economic, political, and other problems. Reacting to the recognition in an interview with QTV, Mayor Srohimali Klo welcomed the international recognition, which is based on merit, as they are countries with bigger and more powerful cities than the Gambia. According to her, this will inspire and encourage other women to know and accept that they can do better. She urged women to support each other rather than undermining each other to realize their aspirations. I receive it with much appreciation. Very glad and humble to receive this on behalf of the women of the Gambia. And I am saying this because if you look at it in the context of uh, other African countries, for example, Senegal or Morocco or South Africa, you can see that uh, the recognition is not biased is based on merit. So this has boosted my morals and it, uh, it has ruled the red carpet for me. 
So meaning that um, it gives me a lot of encouragement. This is um, uh, a merit that goes to all women and youth of, of, of the Gambia. There is low representation of women in key governance position in the Gambia. Women's advocacy groups are currently trying to garner support for a private member's bill to increase women's participation in decision making. And for this vibrant and outspoken politician, women should in the scene and used as singers and dancers for their male counterparts. She calls on women to join politics as decision makers to help address the difficulties women face. I asked Mayor Slow what keeps her moving and achieving. You, you have made a name for yourself, not only within the Gambia, but even outside the country. What is the secret? What is keeping Rohim Maliklo going? Hard work. Hard work. When it comes to um, um, uh, serving the people, I try to put all my efforts. And when it comes to politics also, I put all my efforts. So to be quite honest, there is no secret other than hard work and, and listening to the, 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 the people that I am serving. Just as all Banjulians, she said her party, the United Democratic Party, also received the recognition with appreciation. As she revels in the latest recognition, she expresses commitment to not only the development of Banjul, but also towards putting smiles on the faces of women of Banjul and the country at large. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. The West African competitive program, The Gambia, was launched on Friday by the United Purpose in partnership with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. Al Hassan Bart tells us more. The 1.25 million euros project is funded by the European Commission to increase competitiveness through enhanced quality and compliance in the onion value chain in five regions in The Gambia. The majority of vegetable growers in The Gambia are women, but due to lack of storage and proper marketing strategy, some of their products go to waste. The launch of this project will support and strengthen 120 associations, 3,600 individual vegetable farmers, and 10 micro and medium enterprises. At the launching, Ami Fabure, the Minister of Agriculture, applauded United Purpose and UNIDO for this timely project at a time when farmers are struggling due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. I understand the UP actions aims to strengthen the competitiveness of the Gambia through an enhanced level of production, transformation, and improved export capacities of the private sector in line with the regional and the national industry and the SME's support strategies. Ngen Saturi, United Purpose Project Manager, says the project will impact vegetable production by supporting farmers to transport and market their products in the Gambia and beyond. Specifically, the objective is to improve performance and growth of onion value chain and other relevant for the culture of products and related services by stimulating their contribution to industry, regional trade, exports and job creation. The European Union representative and child affairs Els Bonstra says the project aims to address food insecurity in West Africa. This project is part of the second phase of the Wacom regional program carried out in several ECOWAS countries. It aims at strengthening the competitiveness of West Africa and enhancing uh, the country's integration into the regional and international trading system. Today we mark the launch of a three-year project in support of the fight against food insecurity and poverty. The project is complementary to ongoing EU support in agriculture and horticulture, with a special focus on value chain strengthening and directly addressing cur current market needs. The governor of Lower River Region, Rohijan Manjan, shared some of the challenges faced by local vegetable growers in the region. A lot of vegetables are produced here, but I will sadly also say that a lot are also been waste. We have a lot of wastage just because of the lack of processing or the lack of proper coordination in the value chain. So if this project is coming to support or complement, big the gaps, I think it is very timely. For sustainability, United Purpose will be working with local NGOs such as Freedom from Hunger Campaign in Lower River Region, Trust Agency for Rural Development and Njawara Agricultural Training Center in the North Bank region. Over the next 
three years. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alhassan Ba. Now in, inter now in international news. Despite many African countries struggling to obtain enough COVID-19 vaccine, some have thousands of expired doses they have been unable to use due to vaccine hesitancy and other problems. More in this report by Yahya Jawo. Following the development of vaccines such as those by the AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer, African countries were supplied with doses through covers, a scheme to procure and distribute inoculation for poorer countries around the world. Despite this, most African states are not making best use of the vaccines, with many countries still having leftover doses. Malawi has been left with 16,400 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, while South Sudan has 59,000, which has all passed their expiry date of 13 April. Both countries say they have decided to destroy these consignments, donated via the African Union, despite the World Health Organization, WHO, asking for them to be kept while it investigates whether the expiry date can be safely extended. The Democratic Republic of Congo says it cannot use most of the 1.7 million of the Oxford AstraZeneca doses it received under the global cover scheme, as only about 1,000 of the doses had been administered by the end of April. The South African government have decided not to use them, with concerns that the vaccine offered insufficient protection from the variant prevalent in their country. In late March, one million doses were sold onto the African Union to give to other African countries, but some such as South Sudan say they were not made aware of the expiry date, and Nigeria, meanwhile, said it would be unable to use all the doses in time. Some of the doses were reassigned to neighboring Togo and Ghana, and some were even sent to Jamaica. The WHO says only Togo and the Gambia have confirmed they use all these doses by the expiry date and information about what has happened to the rest is currently unavailable. According to WHO officials in Africa, the lack of adequate preparedness by many African countries coupled with financial challenges are some of the few reasons why there is a slow pace in the vaccine rollout. For DR Congo, the problem is not only weak health services, but also a very poor transport network making the delivery of vaccines to remote areas a major issue. What is certain is that Vaccine hesitancy is a major cause to the slow pace of vaccines rollout in many African countries, as some experts and politicians raise concerns over the safety and efficacy of vaccines. And South Africa's decision to stop using the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine amid concerns around cases of blood clots may have added to these doubts. Reporting for QTV News, I am Yahya Jao. Now let's take a quick look at some interesting sports news. Challenging United moved away from the relegation zone for the first time in many weeks after a 1 0 win against Wa Banjul. BK Milan also, thems, also give themselves a boost with a 1 0 victory against Telecom Boys Gamtel in Friday or that game. More in this report by Moto Kachaga. After letting their lead slip last week, conceding a last gasp equalizer against Elite United, Challenging United made no mistake this time. Mohamed Sawane's free kick went into the roof of the net in the top left corner. It was yet another in what is becoming a long list of stunning free kicks this season. Goals scored direct from free kicks have added to the exciting atmosphere of night matches at the Independence Stadium. The victory has now moved telling the United out of the drop zone in 11th with 13 points. Wa Banjul let a chance slip as a win for them would have taken them up to third, only two points of second place. BK Milan defeated Telecom Boys Gamtel 1-0, courtesy of a Buba Jame strike after Gamtel missed the penalty early on. Saturday night matches feature an exciting fixture between leaders Fortune and 8th place Hawks at 8.30. And we could see the return of former Scorpions player and one-time fan favourite Momodou Sise, Elias Zico, to the league for the first time in more than 15 years. Fortune announced last week that the forward had joined the club. The second match is a Banjul derby between Ports Authority and Banjul United, with lots to play for. A win for Ports Authority would see them up to third. Banjul United, meanwhile, are one of the three teams on 13 points, just one point above bottom side Walidan. 
Sunday's game is a class of the bottom two when Walidan take on Marimo. Mumudu Gajiga, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin, let's take a quick look at our main stories. Winners of the National Chronic Memorization Competition, organized and sponsored by QCEL, have received certificates and cash prizes at the Q City grounds in Bijilo. Muslims in the Gambia are today observing Lelotul Kadri, the night of power, which falls within all days in the last 10 days of Ramadan. The Gambia Red Cross Society joins the rest of the world to celebrate World Red Cross and Red Crescent Day. In international news, despite many African countries struggling to obtain enough COVID-19 vaccines, some half thousands of expired doses they have been unable to use due to problems. In sports news, telling the United move away from, from the relegation zone for the first time in many weeks, and BK Milan also gave themselves a boost with a victory against Gamtel. Well, that's it from me in tonight's edition of the news. Thank you for watching and have a good evening.